Hi everyone, my name is Med to Med. Today's session is going to be all about septic arthritis, which needs to be recognised and treated quickly. As usual, these notes are based on the following resources. I've been using Scott's Notes, the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine and NICE guidelines. As a disclaimer, I am a third year medical student. This video is not intended to be a substitute for any professional medical advice and you should always consult your doctor about any health concerns. So why exactly are we looking at septic arthritis today? Why is it so important? Well, it's worrying because there is a mortality rate in up to 11% of our patients. And entire joint death can occur within 24 hours. So it's a very rapid and very dangerous condition. So now that I've shocked you into believing it's important, what exactly is septic arthritis? It's in the name really, it's a painful infection of the joint. Let's look at what groups of people are at risk of septic arthritis. So people with pre-existing joint disease, especially those with rheumatoid arthritis, particularly because the medications they use are immunosuppressants. Then people with diabetes because they are a weak immune system. This is the same as immunosuppressed patients and in chronic renal failure. People who have had recent joint surgery have increased risk, as with prosthetic joints. Being an IV drug user increases your risk, and so does being over 80. So we are really thinking about those groups of people who are already at risk of other infections or have pre-existing trouble with that particular joint. Just an important point to note, the knee is actually affected in more than 50% of all cases. So how do we recognise patients with septic arthritis? Well, there will be this history of very acute inflammation. This may be difficult to diagnose in patients with underlying joint disease, so we are really looking for this acute or chronic change. There'll be some swelling around the joint, a decreased range in movement, and because this infection is septic in nature, we may be expecting these patients to be systemically unwell. Right. We think we have a patient with septic arthritis, so how do we confirm the diagnosis? The most important investigation in any monoarthritic presentation is a joint aspiration, where you look at the synovial fluid for urgent white blood cell counts and cultures as well. Synovial fluid in a septic patient appears turbid or yellow, but so do crystal arthropathies like gout and in rheumatoid arthritis, so this would be your differential. However, the white blood cell count would be markedly raised in septic arthritis. Plain radiographs and CRP levels may be surprisingly normal in these patients, so don't rely on these alone. Alongside joint aspiration, blood cultures are also essential and need to be done prior to any antibiotics. You really need to be thinking about why this patient has a septic arthritis in the first place. Is it that they're already immunosuppressed or are you able to find a site of infection elsewhere? Pneumonia is present in 50% of those with pneumococcal arthritis, but the most commonly seen organisms in septic arthritis are Staph aureus, Streptococci, Neisseria gonococcus and Gram-negative bacilli. Okay. We've diagnosed septic arthritis, so what's the treatment? We're always going to follow the most recent TRUST guidelines for what antibiotics to use, and you should contact microbiology for advice regarding complex cases or presentation in immunosuppressed patients. Typically, you might see fucloxacillin being given or different combinations of antibiotics. You should also send these patients to orthopaedics for joint atherosynthesis, washout and debridement. Okay, that's it, we've finished. So here's a summary on septic arthritis. It is an acute infection of the joint, which may present with swelling, inflammation, decreased movement and systemic upset. Patients that are at risk are those who are immunosuppressed or have pre-existing joint problems. You should do an urgent joint aspiration and blood cultures in these patients as well. Always follow the trust guidelines when giving antibiotics. 
and refer to orthopaedics for review and additional joint care. And that's it. Thank you for watching.